Hey, 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 you guys. Welcome back. It's Monday, and on Mondays, we mind our money, you guys. So welcome back, and thank you for joining me back for our series. We come back here every Monday evening around 8 p.m., 8.15-ish, somewhere around there, to come share with you some ways on how to organize your money, whether it's your personal finance, whether it's business finance, whether you just need to get your ish in order. We're here to help muster through some of that muck and muck, get some things in alignment. I'm not going to waste your time. We're going to jump right into it. And this week we're talking about how to create a financial filing system. Last week we focused on, it was all about your home office space or the space that you go to in order to do all your bill paying, all your business um, items that surrounded around the whole money system. So today we're going to focus on now that that space is clean, I hope you did that over the course of a week. We want to focus what items do we need to keep, what items we need to store away long term, or what items we just really need to get rid of. So I shared earlier in our community, everybody is organized. But the bad news is your system may not be benefiting you. It may not be nurturing that th- those things. Whenever it's time to go find something, you more than likely can't find it because, okay, yes, I'm organized. I know where it's at. I know where to go to, but do I actually have the documents on file? So I'm going to share with you guys how to create a financial file system that's not going to give you the blues. It'll help you organize those most important documents that you really need to keep long-term, those that you need to get rid of. Um, so you can just have a, a a sense of ease. Now with anything, you guys, some of us, we talked last week, has still have a file cabinet. You don't necessarily need a file cabinet in order to create this financial file system. So I don't want you to feel like you have to go drop down this big, huge investment for a file cabinet. You can get a box, a plastic filing box. You find those at your big box office stores. You can use that as your system, because as you begin to dwindle down some of that extra paperwork, um, you'll realize that I really don't need two, three tiered file cabinets in order to keep the, um, my final financial filing system. Now, what you will need, you can either need that box or you're going to need a drawer dedicated to it. You want to have you some file, um, some file folders. You might need some hanging bars if you're using the actual file, file, um, cabinet to hold them on there. Um, You might need some labels. If you want to keep it super simple, make sure you have your folders, you have a pen, um, so you can write on that folder what's actually going into it because I'm going to show you how to create those categories as well as what needs to go into those categories. So let me know in the comments, do you use a file cabinet or you would prefer to go to the more minimalist um, storage system with just one of those big plastic filing boxes, those that you can actually carry, place um, in a closet, tuck away, and it doesn't necessarily need to take up too much of a footprint. So let me know in the comments, even if you're catching this on the replay, if you use a filing system or you would prefer to use a simplified filing box. Now let's get down to business. I told you what you actually need. You'll need that storage. You'll need some folders. You'll need a pen in order to label those folders. We're going to talk about the big category, and then I'm going to give you a list of items that needs to go into each category. So let's get started. The first thing, most people do have an automobile, unless you have the benefit of living in a city with mass transit um, that you can actually count on. But if you have an automobile, I want you to label one of the folders automobiles. And what's going to go in that automobile folder? It's going to be your lease or your purchase payment agreement. Go ahead and put that in that folder as well, as well as any type of maintenance um, receipts that you would have. So if it's your last break or is it, if you have an alignment agreement, sometimes you might have um, a warranty agreement for tires, whatever it is that's associated with your automobile. I want you to put that in that particular folder. The next folder that we're going to create, you guys, is going to be your banking folder. What's going to go in the banking folder? It's going to be your business account information. It's going to be your personal checking account information that will go into that particular folder. 
The next folder that we're going to create is going to be your business related expenses. I know many of you guys in the community have a small business or gig business or a hustle, whatever it is, but we still need to keep record of those expenses. So I want you to create a folder specifically for that. And in that folder, in the business related expenses folder, I want you to put any type of receipts for charitable donations. You're going to put any type of continuing education, any training that you may have paid for. This training that we're providing tonight is free, thank goodness, for being a member in a community. But any type of additional training that you use to help building your business, I want you to put that receipt in there as well. Entertaining, any type of entertainment. Now, IRS have kind of changed how they um, categorize um, our entertainment expenses. So you want to make sure you take with your tax professional when it comes to that. Also, any type of gifts for clients, receipts, I want you to put that in the business related expense folder. Next folder, our children's folder, you guys, what's going to go in the children's folder? If you still pay for child care, I want you to put your child care receipts in that particular folder, any type of legal documents um, for your kids in that folder. If you've had any major medical expenses, whether it's dental or um, health related, I want you to put that expense receipt in there because I'm telling you, come tax time, you're not going to know where all those receipts are, especially if you did not scan it. But if we go ahead and have a dedicated folder for those health related expenses, you'll know where to go with and get it per kid. Also, if you pay any type of tuition, if your children are in private school or if your children are in college, I want you to put those um, receipts in that particular folder as well. Remember the categories, children, and we're going to have all those things related to our costs um, um, per kid inside of that folder. Also folder you're going to have is your credit cards. If you have credit cards, I want you to have your credit card agreement inside of that folder. I know a lot of things are digital, but if you still like to print things out, you want to put those information per credit card inside of there. Next folder is going to be your household expenses. These are the things like if you have a landscaper or a gardener, you have a housekeeper, um, and you get your receipts for those uh, type of expenses, I want you to put that in there. Also, what's going to go in there, your mortgage receipts is going to go in there. Your rent receipts is going to go inside of that folder, as well as all your utilities, cell phone uses. If you still have a landline, if you still have cable service, security service, all those expenses related to the home, I want you to put that inside of that particular folder. Here's going to be the next one for all my side giggers, right? All my small business entrepreneurs, um, for your income record, all the sales that you make for freelancing, you guys, whether it's from selling um, your makeup, selling your bags, selling your jewelry, whatever it is, all your sales receipts that you make an income on, I want you to put that in the income record folder um, on there. Also, if you want to put um, your salary, your payroll, if you still print those out, you can put that in that same folder as far as income. Um, so once you get to the end of the year, you can keep track of what your uh, sales were and you'll know where to go and grab that information for your CPA or your tax professional. Next one you want to remember is going to be that insurance folder. That's the big category that we're going to create that file folder for. It's going to be the insurance. So what's going to go in there as far as insurance? Your automobile insurance, your health insurance, your homeowner's insurance, your long-term care insurance, your renter's insurance. This was the first year that I actually had to file um, a claim uh, with my homeowner's insurance. Thank goodness I had it set aside. I never used it before. Just pay the premium, you know, escrowed each month. But I actually needed to go get that document um, for my roofer so they can help me with the whole claims and thing process. So you want to make sure you have that in your insurance folder. It's not something that you would use all the time, but you want to know where to grab that document should you need it. The next one is going to be our investments. I love, 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 love investments, you guys. What's going to go in there? Your brokerage accounts, your college savings plans, your IRAs, your Roth IRAs, your 401ks, any type of savings, any money market account information is going to go all inside of the investment folder. Yes, you need a folder for that as well. I know everything is electronic, but there's nothing like 
have it. And when they send your statements, uh, should they still send your statements through the mail, you'll be able to have it. And you'll be able to file it and keep track. Next folder, we're almost done, you guys, is your legal folder. What's going in there? If, you accept, if you're getting alimony payments, alimony payment um, uh, statements in there, child support payment statements need to go in there, school loan payments need to go in there, wills and estate planning information need to go inside of your legal folder. The next one we're going to have, we're going to have a whole folder for medical. You remember I had you guys put your, your children's folder, their health and their dental um, expenses. But as far as your medical, I want you to put in there the bills. If you have bills coming in, any of the type of claim forms, sometimes with our HSAs and things like that, we need to file different claim forms to, for reimbursement of some sort. You want to make sure you keep your blank form inside of there. Any power of attorney forms, they need to go in there. Um, and also, here's the last major folder that I want you to have. I know a lot of you guys are pet owners. And believe it or not, so many people have pet insurance um, for their pets. So I want them to have their own folder. And you can just label that one as miscellaneous. Miscellaneous, you want to put your pet's information in there, you guys. One little quick tip. When it comes to automobiles, now, some of us have more than one automobile. If so, I want you to put, especially if you carry a note or a lease on that. So say you own a Honda Accord over here. You have a, um, a Mercedes Benz over there. But each one of them carry their own payments and things like that. When you have your folder, we did a folder for automobile. Put additional folders within that folder for each vehicle. Should you have more than um, one vehicle. I don't want you guys to overcomplicate this process. Remember, all you really need is a source of storage. You need some files, um, pen um, to be able to write on that. If you want to get technical, use a label maker, whichever way you want to be able to see that folder, we're going to make the main category and then we're going to put each one of those items in there. Remember, when it comes to your tax returns, you only need to keep the last three years of your tax returns. If you're going through there and you realize you've changed insurance companies, go ahead and toss and shred um, the old documents that you no longer need um, to keep all the clutter down um, to a minimum, you guys. So I hope this was really, really helpful. Um, just the key tips on how to get your financial system in order. I know it's been a month full of information. I try not to inundate you guys with too much. We come here every Monday, 8 p.m. here in our Facebook community, Pearls and Purpose. If this has been beneficial to you, I'd love to know what's your biggest takeaway. Leave it in the comments. And remember, if you know a family or friend that would benefit from them, invite them to the community so they can share um, and get their mind um, on their money eventually and finally, right, you guys? So thanks for joining me live. Again, it's Brie Callis. You can connect with me on all social media platforms at Brie Callis, as well as on the blog at BrieCallis.com. Bye now.